Another group lamenting the state of the Grand Bahama economy. Greater attention to be given to special education. And more assistance coming in for hurricane victims. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news to Tory Gate at the entrance of the International Bazaar, the venue of another protest. This time, cab drivers, straw and food vendors speaking out about Grand Bahamas' ailing economy. They are urging the government to intervene in the best interest of the Grand Bahamian people. This coming days after a group of small business owners assembled to express concern as well. Italia Hall reports. Many in the tourism sector gathering in the International Bazaar to voice their concerns. They say that the tourism sector on Grand Bahama continues to suffer and something must be done. Taxi driver Sidney McIntosh is usually stationed by the Grand Bahama International Airport. He says business at the airport is extremely slow. We have about 30 cabs at the airport. Some days of the 30 cab, if 12 move, that's plenty. But as it stands now, it is very dull at the airport. We wonder day to day how we're going to pay bills, how we're going to pay our bills, how we're going to take care of our children, how we're going to take care of ourselves. Vendors at the harbor described the situation at that port of entry as troubling. I've been to the Freeport Harbor for 25 years, and this is the first time in history I ever see the taxi drivers strapping for, for a guest, and that is bad. The government, they always push for us to be entrepreneurs on our own business. So I went that route, and I became a taxi driver. But now at the state, what is it to me to do? I came, I did what you asked. I pushed myself to do something for myself, to help myself. But if there's nothing there for me to help myself with, what am I to do now? Hair braider Margaret Wallace, straw vendor Beulah Ramming, and Daphne Nixon say the industry continues to decline and they are unable to make a living. When you go there, they say one boat in. You don't see the people. You don't see the people. You're walking up and down. Tell, I walk till 2 o'clock. I ain't staying there no longer because it don't make sense. And sun too hot. But they need to do something. If they can't bring the boat, open memory. Memory can open. Bring airlifts. Bring ships. Do something. We need help. And we need it right now. Not tomorrow. Right now. I'm a single mother with two girls. Paying mortgage. I cannot even pay mortgage. Wow. President of the Grand Bahama Taxi Union, David Jones, was also a part of the movement. He says he believes that there is something that the government can do. Somebody has to think differently. Somebody got to understand these people got bills to pay. Somebody got to understand taxi drivers been hiding from day one. We should have way more ships than we're doing. Way more. You understand? Now many of the protesters say they plan to sleep at the Tory Gate of the International Bazaar on Friday evening as a symbol of unity and change. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Well, Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, telling ZNS News that the government is well aware of the frustrations expressed by the vendors and cab drivers at today's press conference. However, he says while the government understands the challenges, they are not new, but have been around for many years. Nonetheless, he says the government is seeking a resolution to the problems facing Grand Bahama. Despite the frustration, though, we must execute the plan and execute the vision and execute the strategy uh, that we have in Grand Bahama. Uh, one of the things that we are continuing to do is to work towards the reopening and redevelopment of the Alukaya Strip. That is happening now. Uh, we are in continual discussions. Uh, yes, it is going to take us some time to have this completed, but we are going to continue to push until it is reopened. There's significant movement on it, uh, and we believe that it will be redeveloped, we believe that it will be reopened in the shortest period of time. We have done things in Port Lucaya uh, where we want to attract new business, we want to attract uh, activity to Port Lucaya so that those vendors can survive. But Minister Thompson says tourism alone will not fix Grand Bahamas' economy, and that is why the government is looking to attract new businesses to the island. On the issue of additional ships, Minister Thompson says there has been some movement on that issue as well. 
also are attracting new vessels. We know that we lost celebration temporarily. And so we have attracted another vessel to come to Grand Bahama uh, on a temporary basis to replace those things that we lost from the Grand Celebration. We also are in the final stages of completing negotiations with Celebration to bring a second boat. So not only are we going to replace the boat that is uh, as gone uh, on a temporary basis, but come early next year, we also will have two of Celebration's boats which will be able to bring double the stopover passengers that we have. We also in the process of marketing, properly marketing Grand Bahama. One of the things we must make sure to do is have targeted marketing so that we can let the rest of the world know that Grand Bahama is open for business. The Carnival, who is going to open up at the end of this month, uh, the end of this week, uh, a new technology business, and we also have a new manufacturing business that is also be going to be opened up uh, uh, very shortly. Well, Minister of State for Grand Bahama assures residents that the government remains focused to execute its agenda and deliver relief to the economy of Grand Bahama. Meanwhile, President of Families for Justice, Reverend Glenroy Bethel, is calling for a reduction in business license fees in Freeport. Bethel says he's making an urgent plea to the Grand Bahama Port Authority to ease the burden on the small business sector, as many are struggling to survive. It's no secret uh, that Freeport is experiencing uh, job losses in record-breaking numbers on the island. And all of us uh, as a uh, community uh, in Freeport have felt the shift uh, in our economy, uh, which is why we saw the need um, to reach out to the stakeholders of Grand Bahama Port Authority to make the first step, the acts in the Port Authority to make the first step in reducing business license fees and any taxes that place a heavy burden on the economy of Freeport during uh, these um, uh, difficult times. Meanwhile, Bethel believes that if business license fees are reduced, it would benefit the entire island as well as investors coming to Grand Bahama. He says this is all in an effort to stimulate the local economy and he's hoping that officials at the Grand Bahama Port Authority respond favorably. We wrote letters, uh, we wrote letters to the Business Licensing Department, uh, we, we uh, wrote letters also to the Chamber of Commerce, and um, um, uh, we're just waiting for a response uh, basically back from, from them, them. And I believe, like I say again, um, we, we, we did the necessary things to reach out to them. And um, it, it's nothing that we trying to be critical about, it's just that uh, uh, we got to get some things happening, we got to get some things moving. Switching gears now, the Minister of Education discussing the future of special education in the country. Italia Hall has more. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeff Lloyd, says the ministry is looking at ways to improve the education system. He says greater emphasis will be given to special needs students with the overall goal of creating much better facilities to host those students and resources. We are going to increase our subventions or our scholarships or our grants to individuals who are interested in going and pursuing um, that kind of study. We are going to invite those now in the private sector whom I met with last week to come and assist us. There is the REACH organization who we are going to you know, collaborate with, who are going to provide um, also a connection with the organization Autism Speaks out of the United States. He says the public sector would be unable to provide education without the private schools in the country. We need, let me emphasize, we need the private sector. And to the extent that we can, and this year we are, uh, by way of subventions, granting over $14 million to the private sector to assist us in the delivery of education. In the private sector, for instance, were it not for them, we would not have the capacity to address these intellectually challenged special needs children. But he adds that efforts are being made to get teachers who specialize in the field. We just got 28 teachers approximately from Cuba who can assist us in this regard, but when you've got thousands who are in need, all the way from babies to 16, 17 year olds, you see what kind of challenge we are working with and that challenge we expect to be met in the coming years. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall.
Meanwhile, Grand Bahama's very own special needs school is celebrating 20 years today. A special ceremony was held to highlight the anniversary and thank those who have played an integral role in supporting the school. The Beacon School celebrating its 20-year anniversary in grand style. As many gather to pause and reflect on the many strides the institution has made over the years. Former acting principal Miriam Sweeting says 20 years ago, the first ceremony held on the Beacon School grounds was similar to the 20th anniversary event, as many persons in the community pulled together to make the special school a reality. Oh, it was very, very exciting. We had the former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, he was down, along with a number of dignitaries from the Port Authority, Lady Henrietta was here because you know the government and um, the Port Authority they had a bond, a partnership where the government um, would um, contribute half and the Grand Bahama Port Authority would put the other. Um, and then of course we had Freeport City Council, I recall Mr. Burton Miller, Mr. Rudy Sawyer, they were very very important in, they were one of the driving forces behind really getting this institution um, going. Um, the day started with one similar, similar setup, um, and um, you know, it was just an exciting day. Current principal T.T. McKenzie Moss says that the special ceremony was planned to commemorate the school's history, followed by a special fun day for the kids. Today we have a big birthday party. The kids have the bouncing castle. We have popcorn, cotton candy, ice cream. We have old time games. The kids are dancing. It's just a whole big celebration. Special guests attending the ceremony were then taken on a tour of the school grounds. Among them, Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, Aram Lewis. 20 years of existence, um, they're growing in numbers. They started out with about 80 students and now they're well over 107. So that's like a 33% increase. Facilities are wonderful. And when I um, walk through these grounds and look at the, the children, look at the toys on their face, and just the name Beacon, you know, I'm inspired, you know, because Beacon, Beacon represents light, it represents hope, it represents inspiration. So there's certainly an inspiration to me, and I really would like to encourage other members of the community to get involved, because um, so often they are forgotten, or they appear to be forgotten, so we need to give them the same level of attention that we're giving to the, to the other school and to the other students. Stay with us, the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.